In this video on transforming functions curves, we learn about horizontal translations, which are also known as horizontal shifts. Now, given a curve whose equation would be y equals to f of x, so that could be any curve like the one I've drawn down here, we can translate or shift this curve in the horizontal direction by defining the curve whose equation is y equals to f of x minus c. And I'll just go ahead and box that. There we go. And now in just a few seconds, I'll work through a couple of examples to show exactly how this transformation works. But let me already point out that we can tell right away that we're dealing with a horizontal transformation, because the only change that we're making between f of x and f of x minus c takes place inside the pair of parentheses here. Indeed, we're replacing x by x minus c. In other words, we're changing the input value of the function. And when we do that, the transformation will always be horizontal. That being said, let's look at a first example. The curve I have here has an equation y equals to f of x, where f of x is given to us here. It's negative x squared plus 4x. Now, say I wanted to shift or translate this curve one unit to the right. Then to do that, all I would have to do is replace c by 1. And in fact, I'll write that here. So I'm going to translate this curve one unit, one unit to the right. And for that, I define the new function whose equation will be y equals to f of x minus 1. And so notice here that to move the curve one unit to the right, we replace the x inside f of x by x minus 1. And I'm quite aware that that may come across as rather counterintuitive. And so towards the end of this video, I'll spend a few minutes explaining exactly why we subtract the 1 here. For now though, let's just see how this works. To obtain this new curve from y equals to f of x, we add 1, so that's the amount we're subtracting from x, to the x-coordinate of every single point along the curve of y equals to f of x. And so let's see, if I start with the vertex that we have here, it has coordinates 2, 4. Following what I just said, to obtain this new curve, I add the 1 that's being subtracted inside this pair of parentheses to the x-coordinate of this point. So that would be 2 plus 1, which of course is 3. And so this vertex ends up right here and has coordinates 3, 4. Notice that the y-coordinate stays the same. Remember, this is a horizontal transformation and so it won't affect the y-coordinates. I carry on, and now I look at this point right here. Now, that point is the origin, and its coordinates are 0, 0. And so, again, following the rule I stated, to find what this point will turn into, we add 1 to the x-coordinate of this point, which brings it to this point right here, which will have coordinates 1, 0. And I'll just label it 1 here on the x-axis. I carry on and focus on the third point we have here, which has coordinates 4, 0, and just as I did for the previous two points, I add 1 to its x-coordinate. So that's 4 plus 1, which brings that point right here. And I'll just label that 5 on the x-axis. And all I have to do now is draw the curve passing through these three points. And that would look something like this. There we go. That's the curve y equals to f of x minus 1. Looking at this new curve and comparing it to the first one we started off with, we can see that it has exactly the same shape, and the only difference is that it's been shifted one unit to the right. And if ever we had to state this new curve's equation, all we have to do is replace every x we have inside the expression for f of x by x minus 1, and that would be x minus 1 inside a pair of parentheses. And in fact, I'll do that here, that would be equal to negative, in parentheses, x minus 1 squared plus 4 times x minus 1. Where all I've done here is copy the expression I have for f of x, but I replaced every x I could see by x minus 1 inside a pair of parentheses. So now I open up these parentheses and simplify as much as possible. So let's see, this will lead us to negative, in parentheses, x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 4 times x minus 4 times 1. So that's 4x minus 4. I now open up this first pair of parentheses, 
which leads to negative x squared plus 2x minus 1, and 4x minus 4 at the end here. Finally, gathering like terms, we have negative x squared on its own, we have 2x plus 4x, which will be 6x, and we have negative 1 minus 4, which will be negative 5. And so this curve's new equation is y equals to negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. And we're done. Let's look at another example. Say I wanted to shift y equals to f of x, so the original curve, two units to the left. Well, in this case, because we're moving the curve to the left, which is the negative horizontal direction, we're going to replace c by negative 2. And so I'll just write all of that here. So we're moving this curve two units, two units, to the left. And as I just said, to do that, I'm going to replace c by negative 2. In other words, we define the new curve whose equation is y equals to f of x minus negative 2. And as you can see here, we're now subtracting something negative inside this pair of parentheses. Consequently, we can turn this into an addition. And we can write that this new curve will have an equation y equals to f of x plus 2. Now, to obtain this new curve from the original graph of y equals to f of x, we add negative 2 to each of the x-coordinates of the points along its length. And since adding something negative is the same as subtracting, we could also say that to obtain the curve y equals to f of x plus 2 from y equals to f of x, we subtract 2 from each of the x-coordinates along this curve's length. And so for instance, this point here at the origin, whose x-coordinate is 0, will turn into the point whose x-coordinate is 0 minus 2. In other words, that's the point with coordinates negative 2, 0. And so I'll write a negative 2 on the x-axis here. I carry on, and I focus on the vertex. Its coordinates are 2, 4. And to see where this point will end up following this transformation, I subtract 2 from its x-coordinate, which, remember, is 2. And since 2 minus 2 is 0, the vertex here ends up right here, and has coordinates 0, 4. I carry on and focus on the third point we have, whose coordinates were 4, 0. Remember, to find where this point ends up on the new curve y equals to f of x plus 2, I add negative 2, or I subtract 2, from its x-coordinate, which is 4. And since 4 minus 2 is 2, that third point ends up right here. And I'll label 2 on the x-axis. Finally, I now draw the curve passing through these three points. And that would look something like this. There we go. That's the curve whose equation is y equals to f of x plus 2. And just as for the first example, if ever we had to find this new curve's equation, all I would have to do is go back to the expression I have for f of x and replace every x I come across by x plus 2 inside a pair of parentheses. And doing that here would lead us to negative x plus 2 in parentheses squared, plus 4 times x plus 2 in parentheses. That becomes negative in parentheses x squared plus 4x plus 4, plus 4 times x, so that's 4x, plus 4 times 2, so that's 8. And so I'll just write that, that's 4x plus 8. I now open up this pair of parentheses, leading us to negative x squared minus 4x minus 4, and we still have plus 4x plus 8 at the end. Finally, I gather like terms, so we'll have negative x squared on its own. We have negative 4x plus 4x, which is 0. And we have negative 4 plus 8, which is 4. And so this new curve's equation is y equals to negative x squared plus 4. And we're done. And so we now know how to translate a curve both to the right and to the left using this transformation. And if that's all you are after, you can stop watching this video now. But if you carry on watching, I'll try to explain why we subtract the amount we wish to move the curve by. And for that, I'll make a bit of space. So let me just shrink all of this. There we go. And what I'll do here is focus on the vertex of the original curve we had. Remember, the original curve had a vertex whose coordinates were 2, 4. Now, the fact that y equals to f of x passes through this point tells us that the output 4 is obtained from the input 2. 
In other words, when we calculate f of 2, we get 4. And we got that from the curve y equals to f of x. But now, consider the curve y equals to f of x minus 1. And I'll just write that here, y equals to f of x minus 1. And let's ask ourselves, for which input value will the output equal to 4? In other words, we need to ask ourselves, for which value of x will the output of f of x minus 1 be equal to 4? Well, we know from y equals to f of x that 4 is obtained for the input value 2. But in this new curve, the input value is no longer just x, it's x minus 1. And so for the output value to be 4, we need this input x minus 1 to be equal to 2. And in fact, that leads us to the following equation. We need the input x minus 1 to equal to 2 for the output to equal to 4. And solving this equation, we quickly find that x has to be equal to 2 plus 1, which of course is 3. And this 3 is the x-coordinate of the vertex on the transformed curve which is clearly one unit further to the right than two was, which is why on the transformed curve, the vertex had coordinates three, four. And we could reason in a similar way for every single point along the transformed curve. And each and every single time we do that, we'll always end up with an equation like the one we have here, x minus one equals to the x-coordinate on the original curve and every single time we'll obtain the new x-coordinate by adding 1 to the right-hand side. And that explains why to obtain the new curve from the original one, we add 1 to every single x-coordinate of every single point along the original curve. And that therefore also explains why, when we change the input from x to x minus 1, the result is to shift the entire curve one unit to the right. And something similar could be done for the second example we saw. Remember, that was for the curve y equals to f of x plus 2. In this case, the input of the function was changed to x plus 2. And so to figure out the value of x at which we reach the vertex, which remember has a y coordinate of 4, we need to figure out for which value of x we obtain 4 from f of x plus 2. And again, we know from the original function that the output 4 is obtained when the input equals to 2. So we need x plus 2 to equal to 2, which leads us to the equation x plus 2 equals 2. And to solve this equation, we subtract 2 from both sides, leading us to x equals to 0. And that's the x-coordinate of the vertex on the transformed curve. And we notice that to get to 0 from the original coordinate 2, we subtracted 2. And this reasoning or this approach could be followed for every single point along this new transformed curve. And each time we'd end up subtracting 2 from the original x-coordinate on y equals to f of x. Which explains why to get from the original curve y equals to f of x to y equals to f of x plus 2, we subtracted 2 from every single x-coordinate of the points on y equals to f of x. That also explains why the transformation y equals to f of x plus 2 results in a translation two units to the left. And there we go, that's it for this video on transforming functions curves, and more particularly, on horizontal translations.